Good evening, Living Waters. Welcome to Ash Wednesday worship as we begin our Lent together. A couple of announcements before we begin worship this evening. We, this service will have communion as part of it. So if you did not, if you're here in person and you did not grab a communion kit, um, yeah, ushers, could you, let's just do that now, just ahead of time. So if you didn't grab a communion kit and want one, Throw a hand up in the air, and Michelle will bring you some. There's no shame. We've all been there. All right, while that's happening, a reminder starting next Wednesday and each Wednesday for the next five in Lent uh, at 7 p.m., both in person and uh, live streamed, so you can participate at home as well, and recorded, so you can participate whenever. Uh, we will be having our Lent program, Lutheran Insights on Scripture. Uh, learning how to engage God's Word in uh, new, relevant ways in, in 2022. Well, not necessarily new, but relevant ways um, to help us engage in this world we find ourselves in right now. Very, very topical given what's happening in the world. So, um, like I said, that'll start next Wednesday at 7. <clears throat> For the ashes tonight, um, I do ask two things. One... If you have hair over your forehead when you come up to do this, that's very helpful. Thank you in advance. Otherwise, I cannot promise you won't get ash in your hair. So, uh, we don't. no one wants that. So, pro tip, please do that. I will wear a mask for that portion, as I will for the um, handshakes at the, or, or waves or whatever at the door. 
uh, because I want people to be comfortable and not do something because I'm not wearing a mask. So I will be masked for that part. If I forget to put it on, just tell me to put it on because I will. So thank you. Um, communion. I want to thank Kermit for being our musician tonight. Thank you, Kermit. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see. We still had Olivia with us virtually in that uh, I couldn't get this to work, so, but she, she gave me the steps to get it to work, so thank you, Olivia, wherever you are. Um, I think that's it. Any other announcements this evening? I haven't said morning yet, so we're off to a good start. All right. <clears throat> and I invite you to please stand as you are able. Friends in Christ, today, with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and of neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to this discipline of, of Lent, self-examination, repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love strengthened by the gifts of word and sacraments. Let us continue our journey these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection as we begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, who walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from You. We have not trusted Your promises. We have ignored Your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you amidst and have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and to all who call unto God shall be saved. And Jesus comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God's journey with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. This time I invite you to be seated. And if you would like to have an imposition of ashes, have you come down the center aisle. And remember to hold your hair up. Dust and ashes touch our place, mark our failures and our falling. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow. Take us as disciples, washed and wakened by your calling. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sand. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, come. Dust and ashes soil our hands, greed of market, pride of nation. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow. As we pray and struggle through the meshes of oppression, take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands, bring us living water, Holy Spirit. Ashes 
just choke our tongue in the wasteland of depression. Holy Spirit, come walk with us tomorrow through the gloom and grieving to the paths of resurrection. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sand. Living water, Holy Spirit, come. Dust and ashes touch our face, mark our failures and our falling. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow. Take us as disciples, washed and wakened by your calling. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, Pride of nation, Holy Spirit, come walk with us tomorrow as we pray and struggle through the meshes of oppression. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands, bring us living water. Spirit To those at home, remember you were dust, to dust you shall return. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness, and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is of the reading of Joel 2, verses 1 through 2. 12 through 17. Because of the coming day of our Lord, the prophet Joel calls the people to a community of lament. Um, the repentant the repentant community reminds God of his gracious character and asks God to spare the people, lest the nations doubt God's power to save. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm of the holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great power of army comes. A great powerful army comes. There, like that has never been from old, nor will again, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. 
Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in his steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave the blessing and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should we be said among the peoples? Where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. This is Matthew chapter 6, 1 through 6, 16 through 21. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, so that you may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. When you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father in heaven who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm not seeing any children, so we can skip to the adult sermon. Well, for those who don't know already, I am a fan of heavy metal music. And heavy metal's perfect for Lent. Hear me out on this one. Powerful images, dramatic lyrics. I tell Tom every Sunday, man, we should get a heavy metal hymn going. That'd be awesome. And my favorite band is Metallica. Who recently announced they're working on another album, by the way. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, which got me thinking, you know, listening to their most recent album, and I thought, upon listening to it again, there's a song on here that's perfect for Ash Wednesday. Uh, on their most recent album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, hopefully not relevant for the current times, there's this third track called, very metal name, Now That We're Dead. 
But listen to these lyrics from the refrain. All sinners, a future. All saints, a past. Beginning, the ending, return to ash. One can lift up the central theme of the song points. As Lutheran theology would say, we're all saints and sinners. Past moments where we fell short, sins we're not proud of that we confess, but at the same time having been given the great gift from God of having a future as saints. Of all people, 2022 is a strange time, of all people, Metallica is reminding us of the point of this evening. It's reminding us of the baptism for the repentance of sins. With God, our existence is not defined by mortal dust to dust lifespan. Then again, at the end of this metal masterpiece, they sing, Return to ashes, shed the skin. Beyond the black, we rise again. We shall live forever. This great gift, the new life and from God in Christ Jesus, it's not just for now, but forever. We shall live forever. Tonight we remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Tonight we are presented with our own frail mortality. That promise from God matters a lot. We have our faith founded in this promise from God. And I love it. A heavy metal band gets it. But do we get it? I mean, truly, do we, do we grasp what this means? That in 40 Plus, days from now, we'll talk about God going to a gruesome cross. That God will set forth into existence life eternal for us all. Yes, that's, that's huge. But do we understand this is the same God who at creation took dust and breathed life-giving Spirit into us? That same living God will be put to death. That God has chosen for us not to be extinguished. Not to end in our own imperfect mortality. But to live forever with God. No more war. No more pandemic. I know this is not heavy metal, but this is heavy stuff especially in a pandemic setting where millions have died. Even now in the bunkers beneath the cities in Ukraine, this promise that we talk about tonight is being proclaimed powerfully. This is the stuff that gives oomph to our witness. It gives us further significance to God's action on the cross. It provides for us context and meaning for us as disciples in the here and now. Notice Jesus' teaching tonight. Jesus does not focus on life eternal. He focuses on life right now. This mortal life that's forever fleeting. Jesus focuses on that. Jesus in all the Gospel tells us not to worry about life eternal and provides assurances for us over and over again Jesus teaches that God has already taken care of us eternally. So focus on the here. Focus on the now. God's time and God's action will happen regardless. We know this from the cross. Our place has been secured. We will live forever. It's a promise, signed, sealed, and delivered by Christ. 
so we get to live fully now. So live like the free people we are. Live into the new life that has been given to us as a gift from God. This is our time to thrive in our callings. And yes, I know that may sound strange. To live life now to the fullest. That's always been the case. Just as it's always been the case that we will die. On one hand, we only have one life to live, a life that will end. But on the other hand, we can live knowing that God has already taken care of us. We're playing with house money. We are freed by God's rich currency of the blood of Christ. So treasure it. For where you're What you treasure, that is where your heart will be also. God wants to treasure the godly things. The values of justice, love, and peace. Not the other things this mortal world offers. Jesus tells us, "Do uh, do not treasure being admired by society. Do not be hypocritical in your faith. Rather be grounded in the cross. Be grounded in the promises of God. Be grounded in a God who breathes life into you, who died for you, and who gives you gifts and callings to be able to help others in this life right now. I don't think I'm breaking any news tonight by saying there is a tremendous need in the world right now. Dare to live knowing, yes, death will inevitably come, yet you still choose to use this time to serve. Hear what else Jesus has to say tonight from our passage, the Sermon on the Mount, if you didn't know where we were. This idea of doing acts of discipleship, living out your faith, not for glory now, because this will end. Our lives on earth here are temporary. Instead, live in thought, in word, in deed for God. For God is eternal. Focus on what truly matters. Do not lose sight of what that is every day. Even in a pandemic. Even in the face of war. Even when contemplating our mortality this evening. So that other reading tonight from Joel that Brock read for us is focused on as well. Which I have to admit, that passage from Joel with the the trembling and the darkness uh, and the things of old, it kind of sounds like a heavy metal song too, I have to say. Return to the Lord would be the refrain. That's the focus of what we're doing this Lent, that we're starting tonight. Here Joel is addressing the community of God's people begging for them to return to the Lord. Work on your relationship with God. Study God's Word. We're going to do that. Discern God's call to action in these complex times. They were complex back then too. All of this is part of that focusing on what matters in this one life we have. Joel with that heavy metal-esque Symbolic words is trying to show us what we're supposed to be doing and living out the cross and resurrection right now. And notice there's a communal emphasis in Joel. Together we return to the Lord. All ages and stages. Together we have been blessed by God with many gifts and talents in this life we have. Together, as the body of Christ, we build up the world for the better. Together, we use them for something that is more than our mortality, something that is eternal. The church is that opportunity to be part of an institution that transcends our lifetime, that transcends our mortality. We not only get to be part 
of the Christ story that continues through the ages. People have been gathering like this to put ashes on their forehead for thousands of years. We also get to contribute and celebrate God's reign with what we've been blessed with. Together, we answer Joel's central question of where is our God? That's why this Lent, we're going to be focusing on studying God's Word. It is a living Word that directly connects us to God and the action of the cross. It guides us in times like these where there are lots of hard questions. And death seems to be surrounding us. Perhaps you haven't read the Bible in a while. It's okay. Return to the Lord. Maybe you haven't felt up to working on your spiritual life recently. Come now. Return to the Lord. Join us. Perhaps this Lent, you come wanting to seek out the living God of love. You want to see what God is in this world. The God who breathes life into us every day, but you don't know where to start. Join us this Lent and return to the Lord. Join us as we engage God's Word in these coming 40 days. As we journey together in focusing what matters most in this one mortal life we have. God has already secured for us eternal life. It's done. We're taken care of. So let's use this season to return to our Creator and to our Savior. Because as Jesus and Joel and Metallica have all pointed out tonight, this life is temporary. We only get one life to glorify God with. So let us live to our fullest this Lent by returning to the Lord. Amen. If you're interested, this hymn is 616, oh, I hope so, in your hymnal. I hope. Please stand as you are able. And join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God, when we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people towards justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all that you have made. Merciful God, renew our civic life, O God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from disease of the body, mind, or spirit and send healing to those who are overcome by illness or grief. Today we lift up prayers especially out loud in the silence of our hearts or in the comments section at home. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, merciful God. Renew this congregation, O God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Merciful God, receive. As we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you praise, O God, for all the saints who have died and yet are alive with you. Receive us with them into your eternal embrace. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, and on behalf of the world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Without moving, let's please share a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. At this time, we will be celebrating communion, if you want to get your elements ready. As folks are getting ready, this is your friendly reminder, do not scratch your forehead, you have an ash on your head. I do it every year. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safety through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all the nations. The night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. All are welcome. This time I invite you to take communion, the bread or wafer of the body of Christ given for you, and with the wine or juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this world. Many the gift, many the words, one in the Lord of all, one bread, one body. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one.
Grain for the fields Scattered and grown Gathered to one For all One bread, one body One Lord One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this world. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for this journey. And Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, Bless you in this day and always. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Try.